Extended life coolants last a long time, but does that mean they'll last that long in the real world? How do you professionally test the coolant to make sure it's still capable of doing its job? That's the topic for this edition of The Trainer. Engines today, though a lot better than they used to be, are still relatively inefficient. Most of the energy released during the combustion process escapes in the form of heat. The cooling system's job is to dissipate that heat to the outside air. Now water is a great medium for dissipating the engine's heat. Only problem is if we have water in the system, that's going to allow corrosion and rust buildups on the internal passages and the cooling system components. There was also a problem with freeze protection. I mean, water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Many parts of the country, that's just not going to cut it. So we add a coolant to it, a glycol-based chemical to alter the freeze point. We also add inhibitor packages to that mixture to protect against corrosion and to maintain the pH balance of the coolant. I want you to inspect the customer's cooling system at least once a year, and I want you to check for two things. I want you to check the pH of the coolant. That's going to give us an idea of the health of the glycol base. And I also want you to check the mixture. We don't want the inhibitor package to be too heavy or too thin. It needs to stay roughly in that 50-50 mix that's recommended. Now, we can go 40 to 60%, but nothing much more than that. So we're going to test the system annually, and the first thing we want to do is make sure that we can access the system without getting hurt. Make sure that it's safe to open uh, it's not under pressure, it's not too hot. What I like to do is grab a hold of the upper radiator hose, give it a little squeeze, make sure I can put my hand on it and hold it there. And then if I can squeeze it all the way shut uh, with just with my hand, then it's a pretty good bet that uh, there's no pressure on the system. I'm safe to open up the cap. Even so, I'm going to take a few minutes to just kind of loosen the cap slowly to that first detent, make sure there's nothing going to pop out on me before I remove it all the way. Now certainly if you have any cause, you have a, a system that's low on coolant, you want to determine why uh, coolant doesn't go away by itself, we have other resources for you at MotorAge.com that help you through basic cooling system tests. Today we're going to focus just on the coolant itself. There are test strips available for you to be able to test not only the pH balance of the coolant, but also uh, what the mixture is and what the reserve alkalinity is. I'm going to show you a different way to check the actual mixture ratio other than using the strip. Right now we're just going to focus on using this to test the pH balance to get an idea of, of the health of that glycol base to see if this coolant is too alkaline or too acidic. We're going to start by taking one of the test strips and we're going to insert it into the coolant for a couple of seconds, 1 1,000, 2 1,000, and then we're going to take it out, shake off the excess. And we're going to allow it to sit for the specified amount in the bottle, 40 seconds. After the 40 seconds has passed, we're going to take a look at the pad closest to the handle and compare that to the scaling on the bottle. We match the colors up to the one it most closely matches to get a reading on the pH. And this is right in between 9 and 11. Now conventional coolants run about 8.5 to 11 on the pH scale. The extended life coolants run between 7 and 9. This vehicle uses an extended life coolant and that's a little high. Now, now we have to do a little bit of, of checking. Why is this now too alkaline? We already know this coolant is going to have to be flushed and replaced because of that alkalinity, but if I don't uncover why, I could run up in the same problem very shortly. Has this been it since the car was brand new? Or is there something else going on we need to find out about?
Okay, now that we've determined why the coolant has such a high alkaline content, we know we're going to have to recommend a flush and fill. Don't really care how long the coolant's been in there. If we did uncover an electrolysis problem or a combustion gas leakage or maybe the wrong water source was used, all of these are factors that are going to contribute to the wear and tear on the passageways and the components. And that's not good for your customer's pocketbook. So we're going to go ahead and recommend a full flush and service on this particular car for that alkalinity. Now, if the alkalinity was okay, the next step we need to take is to check the mixture. Is it in that 40 to 60% range? You know, a lot of customers either top off their coolants with straight coolant or straight water, neither is any good. So what we're going to do is use this tool called a refractometer to exactly uh, determine what that coolant mixture is. And the way we're gonna use how this tool is used, it's very simple. We have a small eyedropper. We're gonna take a sample of the coolant Draw that in the eyedropper. And then on the refractometer, we're gonna flip open the lens. And we're gonna place a couple of drops right on the lens and then close the shield. Kinda of like making a slide when you were in uh, seventh grade science class. Now we hold it up to the light while looking through the reticle and inside you'll see a blue line uh, or a blue section on the upper side, a white section on the lower side. Right where those two meet is the concentration of coolant in the system. In this case, I'm only getting about 44 uh, percent. That's still within the acceptable range, but if we're going to go ahead and service this system, we're going to get that corrected at the same time. Now, if the alkalinity was fine, if it tested within range, but we found that the concentration levels were a little off, we can correct that. We can either add water or coolant to get it back into that 40 to 60 percent range. We just want to make sure we keep it that way so that we don't have a problem with either too much inhibitor or too little inhibitor flowing through the system. A real quick word on that, guys. If you're not sure about the quality of the water, remember, that's half the mixture. If you're living with an area that's got a lot of minerals in, in the water, hard water, if you will, don't use that in the, in, the, in the cooling system and don't use it to flush the cooling system. Use deionized water. If you're really not sure, you want to be safe, auto parts houses will sell you coolant mixed 50-50 already. That takes that out of the equation. Now, if we had tested the, the pH balance and found it to be okay for the type of coolant and service, then the next thing we check is the uh, mixture itself, the 50-50 mix. We did that with the refractometer and that tested okay, a little on the low side, but okay nonetheless. Had it been outside, too high or too low, we can correct that with water or coolant as necessary. We don't have to do a complete flush and fill. The key is to maintain that balance uh, of inhibitors that are flowing through the system. Too much or too little is not good. Keep it around that 50-50 range. Well, that's about all we have time for in this edition of The Trainer. I'm Pete Meyer, Motor Age Magazine. Thanks so much for joining us, and I'll see you next month.